ahead and give a quick recap of uh, what the, the presentation will be. It's on metaverse libraries and uh, connecting virtual world communities. And we have here today Marie and Val and Elise, which is me. And uh, we've partnered together with CVL to create metaverse libraries, and that's what we'll be discussing today. And we will be starting with Val. And um, so I'm going to give a quick explanation of who Val is and who Marie is and who I am. Uh, so Val is the president of the Community Virtual Library in Second Life. And she received a PhD in Library and Information Science in 2012. She's formerly a school librarian. And uh, she's also a library and information science educator with a research focus on the intersection of information literacy and global digital participatory culture. Uh, Marie is a recent MLIS graduate from San Jose State University's iSchool, and she also has a PhD in computer science from Colorado State University. She currently works for HP Labs in Fort Collins, Colorado, and her interests include the use of virtual worlds for librarianship and education, as well as security printing and document analytics. And then as for me, I'm currently an MLIS student in SJSU's iSchool, and I'm pursuing the archives and preservation and digital curation career pathways. I'm also a Vicara member, an Interpares Trust student assistant, an uh, International Directory of National Archives researcher, and a CVL reference volunteer. Um, so if you'd like, uh, Val, you can go ahead and take it away. Wonderful, wonderful. Can everybody hear me okay? If you would just type a Y in the text chat, if you're able to hear me, we'll do a sound test. Great. Uh, welcome to Metaverse Libraries, Connecting Virtual World Communities. And as Elise said, I am Valerie Hill, known in virtual worlds as Val Librarian. Uh, you can call me Val. And my colleagues Elise and Marie and I, we're going to, they're going to join me to help share the goals for the future of libraries in virtual worlds. Over the past couple of years, we've begun to see a need for connecting educational virtual world communities as essential resources. Just like in the past, books and print materials were shared through libraries, and libraries collected them, the high quality, best content we could find, we have an opportunity to help share communities, high quality communities within virtual worlds as well as landmarks to immersive learning environments in various virtual worlds. But none of us can accomplish this alone. So by pooling our talents, our skills, and our passions and interests, we can contribute to the future of librarianship, and we can help identify the best practices in virtual worlds. So that's what we're here to talk with you about today. So while Metaverse Libraries, the concept of this, is really exciting and we are enjoying this hypergrid jumping journey that we're on, um, we realize that not everyone wants or needs to go outside of Second Life. And that's just fine. There are plenty of amazing simulations and amazing, wonderful communities here in the virtual world of Second Life. And we still believe it's a great place for people to learn virtual world skills, particularly for educators, because there are so many um, tools right at your fingertips. Um, and there are also so many places to visit. However, in order to plan for the sustainable future of libraries in virtual worlds, we believe that it's important to explore other evolving virtual worlds. And that's what led Elise and Marie and me to create the concept of Metaverse Libraries, the Virtual Community Resources Network. Today, we're going to share the purpose, that's the why, and then we're going to share our proposed methods, or the how, for connecting virtual world communities. So the main branch, the Community Virtual Library, many of you realize has been the main hub for virtual world librarians and educators to connect and share landmarks for a decade in Second Life. In fact, there are numerous events going on at the Community Virtual Library all the time. We currently have a digital citizenship exhibit, which just opened. It'll be on display through August. There, there are also additional spaces for presenters to add more content. We're going to build an upper deck. We have book discussions, trivia nights, info pub dances. We have monthly ACRL 
a connection with the American Library Association, meetings with speakers, which are just great content. We have social media guru, Laura Solomon, who's written several books on social media for librarians. She's going to speak on Sunday, March 19th at noon, right here in Second Life. So we are committed to maintaining our Second Life space as long as it is viable. But we're also branching out to other virtual worlds for a variety of reasons, including cost effectiveness and ease of use. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, all the reasons to visit other virtual worlds as we go along. But before we do, I wanted to mention at the Community Virtual Library, we have this spaceship. And if you've been over there recently, right outside the main library, there's a spaceship called our Hypergrid Resource Center. And as we began to think about exploring various virtual worlds, we thought how confusing it is to create new avatars, download additional viewers, navigate to yet another different interface. Um, so as librarians, we thought that guiding our patrons and our visitors to the library to locate resources, that's a natural service that we're trained to offer. And to that end, we put up this spaceship at the CVL main branch here in Second Life and we called it the Hypergrid Resource Center. Um, I got a lot of resources from Selby here, who is a Hypergrid resource expert. <laughs> and um, what we have been doing is um, at the spaceship, if you teleport to the top, you'll find kiosks for a variety of virtual worlds, such as Kitely, InWorlds, or Avacon. And each of those kiosks has links to the instructions that will help you find your way to a different virtual world. So as we are learning more about the OS grid and open sim avatars, and we're discovering how you can hypergrid jump and even take copyable inventory in your suitcase, these skills that we are learning have helped us to offer our tours to other people to help them start um, here in Second Life and also explore as we go along. So our new branches that we are branching out to. Here's a shot, this slide that I've just, that's resing, is a shot of Marie and Elise and me when we first went out to Kylie. And we began to learn our way around this huge, very cost-effective sim. And we were deciding where we might want to work as librarians. And I could picture workshops and speaking events in this gigantic conference center. Marie could imagine bringing her students into a STEM library for girls and a science class. And Elise started imagining how Vicaro could branch out and give students their own places and spaces to build and to network. And we began to realize that each virtual world library should have a specific purpose and it should fulfill a special need, just like a special library in the physical world does. We don't have every single library identical for every single community. And so there's no need to reinvent the wheel. We can have specific types of libraries. So back in October, we did our first tour as librarians. We brought educators and other interested people to explore in Kitely for our first virtual world tour. And while we were learning how to navigate these new spaces, that's when we realized there's no need to reinvent the wheel, trying to create and share everything in every virtual library, world library. Rather, if we concentrate on finding what has already been created, or we create and build for a specific topic or theme, we can share virtual world contents to communities of interest. And we can find those various educational communities and help them network with each other. Now, as a librarian here in Second Life, having worked as a reference librarian for a long time, I have spent many lonely hours at a virtual world reference desk. Sure, I can work on other projects on my computer, but waiting for visitors to stop by with questions is sometimes an isolating experience. The potential for us to um, communicate and connect with communities may be the most important way that we can promote real learning in virtual worlds. And all of us realize the Second Life search tool makes it really difficult to find the amazing artistic and high quality simulations, such as historical simulations, that are available. We do provide a list of landmarks at the CBL Main Library. If you look at, I, think my, I don't think you can see it in this um, slide, but there's a, an old um, card catalog, a little wooden box on the, on the reference desk. And um, that little wooden box does, um, if you click on it, it takes you to a, a card catalog. But that's only a starting point 
for where librarians can help virtual world communities and individuals. If we pool our talent in connecting and sharing, that's our goal. No longer sitting and waiting for people to come knocking at our virtual door. Although I still do have office hours at the desk, and so can you, uh, just click on the calendars um, and you can see if there's any open spots because we do rely on our virtual world volunteers, um, friends of the library, just as people do in real world, physical world libraries at um, infoisland.org is still our, um, our website. So moving on to the next slide, connecting people to new places. As the three of us began to explore the huge educational spaces in Kitely, we found tons of free tools and free items everywhere. Everything from whiteboards, projectors, desks, buildings, microscopes, to a rock guitar that we just couldn't help adding to our inventory and wearing around while we were exploring. So Marie's going to tell you more about what you can find and do in Kitely and how cost effective it is. We are learning how to take items from one world and carry them into another. And that's a skill which certainly is going to help educators and all virtual world travelers. So we continue to learn and help each other as we go. Our second virtual world tour was in December of 2016, and that's where we offered uh, Metaverse libraries to InWorlds to send a lawn library, which is a perfect example of a special collection library because its focus is fantasy and sci-fi. Um, we put our instructions to the, uh, um, in the Hypergrid Resource Center, and people, people came to the tour. We were so excited to have people actually join us and come to the tour. And you can see in this next slide what a beautiful space, a gorgeous space that Sendalon Library is. It's a beautiful castle with many floors full of interactive resources. And I think many of you have probably found, like we have, that the best experiences in virtual worlds are events with others. Type a Y in text chat if you found that to be true. When you come in all by yourself to visit a beautiful space in a virtual world, it's lovely. But when you share the experience with other people, it's often more satisfying. And Send Along has had many events in this beautiful um, space. Um, virtual world library collections. Send Along has presented numerous exhibits, such as a steampunk exhibit. And this library certainly illustrates there's no need for us to reinvent the wheel because their space is imaginative and it is very unique. So as we continue to learn a variety of viewers and ways to jump between these various worlds, we can share that knowledge and compile it so that other people can have better access. Sometimes I even enter a new world, and this might happen to some of you, and I realize I already signed up for it a few years ago, and then I bump into myself again. So it's crazy. Learning in these new spaces can be overwhelming, but I think it really helps that we're all in this together. Um, another virtual world that, um, that Selby, uh, thinker we're here, and um, Elise and Marie and I have recently discovered is a completely web-based virtual world where you do not have to download any software. It's called Cyber Lounge. And many of us have, have for years, Second Life has been crit criticized because of this steep learning curve. Um, and reluctant users just don't want to spend the time to uh, conquer that. It's difficult to bring teachers and to um, and bring administrators in and show them the potential for constructive learning and collaboration in virtual worlds when we can't get past that steep learning curve. So an easy way to enter a world like Cyber Lounge might just be the answer to that problem. So the Metaverse Library tour of Cyber Lounge is already scheduled for April 30th at noon. So watch for a note card coming to um, for that tour in Cyber Lounge. There are a lot of ways that people can get involved and help us with Metaverse libraries. Um, there's, there's so many things you can get involved in, and you can see that your virtual goals, goals may align well with ours, and we can help connect your virtual world communities. You might consider office hours in Second Life. We have our calendar. Um, keep a lookout for our session at the Virtual World's Best Practices in Education Conference, um, because we'll be presenting and talking about some of these different ways that we can help you and your virtual world communities collaborate and connect. We're also planning to tour Avacon, in, uh, on May 7th, Avacon uh, Rockcliffe, which is a really great example of a virtual world community that's been here for quite some time in Second Life, has a library in Avacon. So we're going to be touring Avacon um, on May 7th. So we do need help with all of these things. If you're interested in helping with the Hypergrid Resource Center, if you enjoy helping people learn how to nav navigate or hypergrid hop to other worlds, 
please reach out to one of us later. Feel free to friend us and reach out. Um, we're looking for speakers on library-related uh, topics, um, Metaverse Libraries programming. We've, we're having here at um, the Community Virtual Library a poetry contest coming up in April for a National Poetry Month. And um, so there's so many ways that you can get involved. And, and it's what really works best is when people get involved and contribute what they love to do anyway, what they're interested in, what they're passionate about. So um, in a moment, you're going to hear about our new database, which is something that uh, we're going to need help with, that everybody buddy can help with. And when we pool our talents, it really helps us all to connect. So please contact, contact us later to find out how, how we can promote your, vir your virtual world goals through connecting communities. So now I'm going to hand this um, the program over to Marie, who's going to talk a little bit more about Metaverse Libraries. So take it away, Marie. Okay, so my name is Ann Vans Lappies in Second Life and Marie Vans in Real Life. Um, as Elise said, I recently graduated from the San Jose State University iSchool's Masters of Libraries and in Information Science program. Um, during the day, I work as a research scientist for HP Labs in Fort Collins, Colorado. So this evening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about other open sim based worlds in more detail that um, Val talked about. Um, and I know that um, Val talked about our meta literacy tours, and what and and what we have done, and that we have done some tours of in worlds and kitely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the differences between in worlds and kitelys, in an attempt to help you understand the advantages and disadvantages of each. So, starting with in worlds. InWorlds is an open sim based world. For those of you who don't know what that really means, it just means that it looks and feels very much like Second Life. There are some differences though. And open source, open sim is, is an open source software that allows anyone to create a world that looks like it could be a part of Second Life. So both Kitely and InWorlds are based on this open sim software. So here, um, in InWorlds opened in 2009, which was, I think, three, no, maybe six years after Second Life. Um, as of just a few days ago, there were 163,000 users, and currently there are 1,307 regions, which is actually down from 1,525 re regions just a year ago. And that could be due to the restructuring of the payment model. And the, and the restructuring of, of the land, that, um, the land options that you can get. Um, until very recently, the only way to acquire goods was to find it in, in world and buy it there. There was no marketplace at all for in worlds. Um, but just this past August, a beta market site was opened. And it, um, as you can imagine, has nowhere near as many objects as the Second Life Marketplace has. Um, costs are still very competitive with Second Life. In Second Life, a region costs between $75 for an open space region, which has a limit of 750 prims, up to $295, and this is per month, for a private region, and that gets you 15,000 prims. And just to give you an idea here, a region is a 256 by 256 meters. And there's also costs associated with actually creating the region. So in Second Life, this can be as low as $100 and as high as $600. So if you compare that to the in-world costs and you see how the largest available land, which is a two by two region, meaning there's four actual regions in the largest available, it costs only $10 more than the smallest Second Life region. And clearly, the number of prims available for the cost is much better for, for in-worlds. Okay, so as with Second Life, in-worlds runs on both Windows PC and Apple computers. And like Second Life, in-worlds has its own dedicated user interface. Unlike Second Life, however, that which which will allow people as young as 13 in if they are restricted to land owned by a sponsoring organization like a school and also 16 to 17 year olds who have to stay to G rated content the minimum age for in worlds is 18 they really they will not allow any anybody under 18 to use this um, to use this 
be in this world. So there is good support for users in world. Most questions are asked in the forum that are, are answered almost immediately. I've, I've had several cases where um, I had a question and within hours I got a, I got a response. Um, at least, and, and if you can't find the answer to your question on the forum, you can always submit a ticket. I've, I've never done that for, for, for Second Life, so I don't know how, how, um, how that works, if it's any better or worse. But like Second Life, you are not restricted to the use of the dedicated viewer. So instead, there, there is a long list of third-party viewers that also work within worlds. I, I myself have experience with Firestorm, Singularity, and Cool View VL. But I, now that I know about these other two, Alchemy and Kokoa, I'll be wanting to check those out as well. So to, to continue with the comparison, something that is near and dear to the hearts of everyone who builds in Second Life, the cost of uploading textures in InWorlds is significantly cheaper than Second Life. You can actually upload and upload and upload till the cows come home and you won't be any poorer. The exchange rate for InWorlds is twice as good as that for Second Life. At least it is, it is today. A dollar will get you exactly 242.72 lindens and that and that includes a fee of 30 cents for every transaction in in world a dollar will get you 500 izzies they call them izzies i usually like to talk about collaboration because this is important especially when building large scale educational projects and um, unfortunately in world suffers from the same exact issues as Second Life. Permission issues with textures and, and per object basis makes it difficult to share resources. Group permissions alleviate some of the problem, but not usually for items purchased on the marketplace unless they are purchased with full permissions. So for international language support, you may have you may have used a translator or not. I, I have. This helps when, for example, you are talking to someone who doesn't speak the same language as you. And there are a, are a few free translators for Second Life. I have actually used a couple, but they're probably outdated by now. There are apparently some translators available now for Second Life that uses Google Translate as the basis of their translation services. As anyone who has ever used Google Translate Translate knows. Outcomes can be pretty hilarious. In InWorlds, there is something called Chat Worlds, which supports 42 languages. I haven't had a need to use it in World yet. So I can't really comment on how good it is. Finally, in Second Life, we have Speakeasy, which I'm using right now to put what I'm saying into chat for hearing impaired, and Radagast, which will speak text put into objects for sight impaired. I was not able to find a speakeasy equi equivalent for InWorlds. But Radagast is software that should work with any open sim world, although I haven't te really tested it. To sum up InWorlds, it's based on open sim, it's texture rich and an immersive environment very similar to Second Life and can be used for essentially the same types of events such as e meetings, e exhibits and social events. The biggest benefit is cost, which is which it which it's and and its biggest disadvantage is that the community is much smaller than that found in Second Life, and I think that's what most people will much most people will will tell you about it. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the community library that I direct in InWorlds. Here is a picture. I, um, Val showed you a much more close up. This is a much further away picture of the library. It's, it's situated in the highly desirable Magellan Sea and, and is accessible by boat, because we, and we have several docks for that, or airplane. The Sendalon Community Library was founded in 2011 by Proxmary Jazz and Alexina Proctor, both of whom were very active on Caledon in New in Caledon, sorry, in Second Life for a, for a long time prior to their move to InWorlds. 
At the time they opened the library, it was, it was the only general resource and book collection library in InWorlds. The building was designed and built by master architect Strand Starsider, and it was actually donated to the library. We currently have a two by two region, and the building takes up over one half of one of those regions. As I mentioned previously, visitors can arrive by boat and dock their boat while visiting. We have several book collections, including a fantasy wing, a sci-fi and steampunk wing, and a folklore collection. There is a reference desk that's not manned like CVL, what Bao was just saying, but there is a call board and visitors can see which of the library board members or volunteers are online and then they can call for help with questions. One of the things we do is put on themed exhibits. We always create a book collection to go with the exhibit theme. For example, the images on this slide show some of the 3D exhibits from our last exhibit, the Folklore Tales. We put out a call for artists and always have an opening party with a popular DJ. These opening events are usually very well attended. If you want to get an idea of what these parties look like, you can see a couple of machinima I made on my YouTube channel. The Folklore's Tale machinima can be found at the URL in the chat. Aside from the exhibits and book collections, we have several store storytelling areas, a video room where you can watch out, watch out of copyright films, which are silent, a, a cafe, beautiful gardens, and a theater. We, are, we have had troops that have put on weekly productions in the theater, and we hope to use the theater for one-off lectures as well. So moving on, the next world I'm going to discuss is Kitely. Kitely is an OpenSim virtual world that is currently the largest commercial provider of OpenSim regions. As of today, there are more than 14,000 regions on which 13, 000, more than 13,000 worlds exist. Work actually began in 2008, but the public beta didn't go live until March of 2011. The major difference between Kitely and other OpenSim-based worlds is the on-demand aspect of Kitely. This means that a world is not persistent in the sense that if there is no one in the world, it is not running. For virtual environments like Second Life and In Worlds, all worlds exist whether there are avatars there or not. Or it's like, you know, if the tree falls in the forest kind of a thing. This saves money because the same server can be used for multiple worlds rather than having dedicated servers for each world. As you can see, from the slide, the cost is another major benefit of Kitely. I have a plan that is actually no longer available. My plan allows me to have 100,000 prims on each of my 16 regions because I am grandfathered in on an old plan. In any case, the cost for new users is cheaper even than in worlds. Probably the biggest drawback is the limit on the number of avatars that can share a space simultaneously. Another drawback is that some plans, and mine, are, mine is included in that, cost one KC, which is the Kitely, um, the Kitely currency. It'll cost one KC per minute per avatar. And this works out to be um, 0 0.005 cents for every minute for, per avatar. Similar to Second Life and InWorlds, Kitely supports Windows and Mac. Kitely used to have a dedicated viewer that worked on Firefox and Chrome, but has since, since suspended that functionality. Instead, Kitely will work with most third-party viewers like Firestorm. And similar to Second Life, anyone over the age of 13 can visit, but not to mature regions. So it is a more flexible platform for developing educational content for younger kids. Also similar to InWorlds, Kitely has a forum for asking questions and is also considered to have the most user-friendly administration tools for OpenSim hosting. I find that to be the case since I have 16 regions and it's easier to enter one of my worlds using their web-based tool than to use a landmark. For Marketplace, Kitely does not have nearly as many things for sale as Second Life, but it is growing and another advantage of it is that much of what you buy there can be imported into uh, other OpenSim worlds. Kitely is similar to InWorlds for texture uploading in that all uploads are free. However, the exchange rate is actually worse than Second Life unless you buy a lot of KCs. 
a dollar's worth of KCs is only is only 200 a dollar's worth of KC is only 200 and recall that you get almost 243 lindens for a dollar but if you buy fifty dollars worth of KCs then you'll get 300 KCs per dollar better than second life but not as good as in worlds so there really is no difference in support for collaboration between Kitely and other open sim, sim environments. However, there seems to be a culture of sharing everything, so it is actually much easier to copy and transfer materials. Kitely is not as old as Second Life, so there are, there are not a lot of ready-made objects for purchase like there is for Second Life. Another drawback is that I could not find direct support for internationalization. I'm guessing that is just because someone hasn't yet made a Google Translation object yet, or I haven't found it. It's probably only a matter of time. Also, I could not find a copy of Speakeasy or anything like it for the hearing impaired, but Radagast should work as it does for other open sim worlds. Okay, so one of my 16 region is my STEM island for girls that Val mentioned. It was originally conceived as a project for my master's in library and information science, but it quickly became apparent that I was not going to be able to, to complete it before the time I had left to finish my degree. Plus, this project requires taking measurements of things like amount learned, satisfaction with learning experience, etc. And this meant I had major hurdles to overcome in order to have it pass the school's requirements for use of human subjects. Another time-consuming aspect I had not originally accounted for. My island is designed for K-12 teachers to learn about why there are so few girls in STEM. I started with an OR, which means an archive file. The picture on the top right shows what part of the sim looked like when I first started working on it. I retextured most of it because it was almost all chrome or metal, and I really can't abide that much chrome in virtual environments. My headquarters, seen in the middle and bottom picture, is used for displaying statistic and other, statistics and other information about the issue. I also have a library for learning as well as reading recommendations for girls. There is an auditorium for lectures and several bu small buildings for hands-on activities such as physics experiments and learning to code. Depending on how much time I have to devote to this labor of love, I am shooting for a grand opening event late this coming summer. Okay, so these pictures I'm showing are parts of the Metaverse Library Sim. As Val already told you, we are using this four-region sim to create a space for libraries, museum, and other educational venues to use for branches. Obviously, we have a CVL branch, um, a Vacara branch, and a special library branch for my STEM for Girls library. We have several board members and are looking to expand the number of branches to include things like Rock, Rock Cliff, Cyber Lounge, and others, all of which Val described. I used another f free. I used another free open sim um, or, and the majority of objects on this universal campus is copyable, including things like microscopes, chairs, you name it, pretty much everything. From this point on, I'm going to be showing you the rest of the 12 regions I have very quickly. Um, the reason for this is just to demonstrate the ease with which I was able to create so many complex worlds so quickly and with lots and lots of prims. Okay, so Kitely really is a builder's dream. Recall that I have 100,000 prims for each of my regions to work with. Here is what I call my home base. It is a gorgeous house that only I can get to when I want to work on stuff alone. I have had a heyday with textures here. You might be able to tell. I also have a medieval castle town. I haven't done much with this yet, but I have but I took a course during my MLIS degree where we had to assume a Tudor character and furnish our homes as if we were living in a Tudor town. This, what, it was really my first experience in Second Life and I will never forget how much fun I had in that class. This castle sim feels like a return to those days. And as you can see from this picture, I also have a modern town. I haven't done anything with this at all, but I can imagine getting experience setting up shop, running some movies, and having some modern parties here. To be honest, it's not one of my favorite spots, so I may get rid of it and replace it with another build if I find one I don't that I don't already have. This is an interesting one. 
it is one of the newest and supposedly it is virtual reality reality ready I haven't tested that because I don't have a VR headset but I'm sure I will someday what I really like about this world is it's back to nature environment and I'm looking for large animals to inhabit it and this is another interesting world it's not very pretty and most of it is extremely flat but what I like about it is that these shops have a ton of building materials in them. So for example, if I want to make a new couch or a chair, I can come here, pick up, fur pick up furniture sculpts for a couch or a chair, take it back to whatever sim I'm working on and build it there. There are tons of free sculpts and textures available in these shops. And finally, here is my Italian vill village. It comes complete with a dock, a church, several shops, houses, waterfalls, and a way cool dance floor. This is another sim I haven't really done anything with yet. But it's beautiful and I have already stolen, meaning copied, several pieces from this sim and used it on other sims. So this completes my part of the presentation. I hope I gave you lots of food for thought and the curiosity to come visit both InWorlds and Kitely, especially Metaverse Libraries. Thank you. No worries, I'm going to go ahead and get myself situated. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm Elise Donovan Jones, and I'm an MLIS student at San Jose State University's School of Information. I'll be speaking about my involvement in Metaverse Libraries through my work with Vicara and CVL. And uh, most of you are familiar with Vicara as it's hosting uh, this webcast. Uh, it's a student group at the iSchool. It's based in Second Life and dedicated to encouraging and, and enabling students to take part in virtual worlds as an education and information medium. And I've provided some contact information on this slide uh, for our faculty advisor, uh, Dr. Pat Franks, and then also for myself. And you'll also see our link to our website. And I have a kind of description of uh, the amphitheater, which is where we are as well, um, which you're welcome to read that uh, on my uh, speakeasy slide. <laughs> Okay, and then I also have a quick background on Vicara. I'll go ahead and skip it because I want to make sure that we have time for questions. Um, but I do have it in the speakeasy, and you're welcome to read the slide here. Okay, uh, so Val and Marie have discussed Metaverse Libraries and the island we created on Kitely for of educational virtual communities across the metaverse to connect with each other. And uh, Val mentioned the CBL branch and Marie, her STEM for Girls library um, and several other spaces as well. Well, Vicara also has a space on metaverse libraries in Kitely, um, but it operates a little differently from the library branches on the island. Uh, rather than create a fully functioning branch of Vicara, I curate an exhibit space there. And it's similar to the exhibit space that we create each year for VWBPE. Uh, having the exhibits in Kitely allows others who haven't been to Second Life learn about Vicara and then also about Second Life. And um, so I have the image on this slide as an overhead view of the uh, building where the Vicara exhibit is. And it also does have extra space in it for other higher education communities to come and share the space as well. Okay, so you might be wondering how Vicara ended up with the space on Metaverse Libraries at all. Uh, after all, we already have a large space in Second Life supported by the iSchool. Uh, well, in many ways, Metaverse Libraries wouldn't exist without both CVL and Vicara. Um, as far as Vicara goes, uh, Metaverse Libraries in Kitely is, of course, owned by Marie, uh, who is a Vicara member and iSchool alumna. And I also met Marie through Vicara as well, and I also met Val through Vicara. I did a presentation on Vicara at a CVL exhibit um, late spring, early summer last year. and. Uh, so, 
Val's also been involved with Vicara's annual conferences from the beginning. So if you go through our, our car, archivium next door, um, you'll be able to see Val's mini presentations on display. And uh, I have a background in public libraries and reference. And so when Val mentioned the idea of working at a virtual reference desk, I jumped at the chance. I was very excited. And so I love having office hours there and being able to be involved with a library in virtual worlds. Uh, so after getting to know Val and Marie a little bit better, uh, through Vicara and CVL, I attended tours that Marie had given of her spaces in InWorlds and Kitely. Uh, and this was the first time that I ever created accounts for and visited worlds other than Second Life. Uh, and to be honest, I didn't realize there even were worlds beyond Second Life. Uh, so during our tour of Kitely, uh, we offered, Marie offered the space um, that's now Metaverse Libraries there. And uh, it's just a place for librarians and educators to create branches or in, in uh, Vicara's case, exhibits. And uh, Val and Marie already gave a really good overview of what that is. Um, but so I loved the idea um, and so did Val. And after a ton of brainstorming, we came up with the initiative for Metaverse Libraries. Um, and we didn't want to just use the space for branches or exhibits, but as a networking hub for educational communities, regardless of their world, to make it uh, unique and something that hadn't quite been done before. And so because Vicara is my main community, it was the best way for me to contribute to Metaverse libraries. Um, and as for creating the exhibit rather than a full branch, I spoke with Pat about the idea of creating a branch, and we both felt the resources needed to maintain a second fully functioning space were beyond Vicara's scope for the time being. Um, and not to mention that Vicara is an official iSchool organization, and so there are certain restrictions uh, and responsibilities that we do have to follow, especially regarding funding. Um, and so that's another limitation for full out branching. Okay, and then I just have an image here of Marie and Val and me uh, on the island having a meeting. Okay, so if Yukara can't have a fully functioning branch on Kitely, why bother joining Metaverse Libraries in the first place? Um, well, uh, there are several advantages. Uh, one is to teach students about the Metaverse. So while Second Life is the most popular and expansive virtual world, and we feel the best one to get started in, it's not the only one. And uh, there are many advantages and disadvantages to joining the different virtual worlds, which uh, cost is one, and Marie went over uh, quite a few of them regarding uh, in worlds and Kitely as well. Uh, but so knowing this, having this knowledge might be helpful to our students who hope to create virtual world communities for their workplaces or even direct their own virtual libraries or archives in the future, knowing what options are out there. Uh, and then another possible advantage is the knowledge that there are options for Vicara should Second Life raise its prices beyond iSchool's budget or shut down, which of course isn't likely. Um, or should we need to leave Second Life for any reason? We don't predict this, um, but it is still something helpful to know that there are other worlds out there. Um, and then finally, the exhibit in Kitely gives Vicara exposure beyond Second Life. Um, it's a way for iSchool students who might use other virtual worlds to discover Vicara, and it's also a way for Vicara to network with other universities and iSchool or SLIS programs functioning in other virtual worlds beyond Second Life. Uh, and so I've mentioned this is an exhibit that I curate as a Vicara member, but how can other students participate in Metaverse Libraries and the Vicara University space? Um, well, anyone is welcome to visit Metaverse Libraries in Kitely. Uh, to get there, you'll need to create a free Kitely avatar and join the Librarians in Kitely group. And if you haven't already, please feel free to take the note card that we have up front in front of the slides that has all of the links that we've been talking about and a few more. Um, and so it has a link on how to get into Kitely as well as how to get into InWorlds if you've never uh, gone into there before. And so once you're on the island, you can explore the different branches and exhibits. There's lots of freebies, uh, and CVL even has a bunch of free avatar customiza customizations. And we also give tours on the island. Uh, now, if a student would like to curate a space of their own or help out with the Vicara exhibit, they can contact me and I can give them building privileges. Um, and students can also use parts of Vicara University space as a sandbox. Um, 
because it is free to upload images and textures to Kitely, uh, it might be a good place to practice if you enjoy designing clothes or maybe you'd like to import some slides to see how they look before a big presentation, that sort of a thing. Um, and even if you don't create a Kitely account, you can still participate in Metaverse libraries, uh, meta literacy workshops, which will hold in Second Life and other virtual worlds. Um, and that would certainly include Cyba Lounge, the one upcoming on April 30th. Um, and so it's just a one click, no viewers to download, a fairly low uh, learning curve. Um, and uh, please do acknowledge my notes on the slide. Um, while Kitely can offer some advantages, it is still only a secondary space for Vicara. Um, and uh, likewise, Vicara in Second Life is the official iSchool space, and there's no need to travel beyond there um, in order to participate in Vicara and get a well-rounded understanding of virtual worlds. So I don't want any students to feel isolated if they can't get into Kitely. Um, it's an excellent exhibit and outreach option for us, though. Okay, so the next few slides are images of the Vicara space um, in Second Life. And uh, something nice about the land that Marie purchased is that the buildings you see uh, were already there when we arrived. Um, and uh, Marie had explained the OAR um, that she had used uh, to do this. Um, so uh, please don't give me credit for the beautiful architecture. I absolutely love it. Um, but without all of it in place, I would never have had the time to dedicate to making the project a reality. Um, and really, I only added the flag and the exhibit items inside. Uh, so it was very manageable for me, especially over the summer and winter break, <laughs> to get everything prepared. Um, but it has been a great way to hone my building skills. Uh, and so uh, this image uh, is in front of the Vicara University space, and um, you can actually see Marie's in-world building in the background behind it. Okay, and here's another view just from the top. And yes, that is a rooftop patio. And yes, it is available if anyone would like to uh, have a space up there. <laughs> okay, and then um, this is inside of the building. Uh, so the presentation on Vicara here is modeled after the one that I gave at CVL late last spring that got me involved in all of this in the first place. Um, so anyone visiting the exhibit can browse the slides to learn about Vicara, and I also have a note card there with all of Vicara's contact information. Now this is my first ever use of media on a prim. And Marie taught me how to embed a URL very recently uh, as a texture so that visitors can browse the Vicara blog from inside the exhibit. And the feature also allows me to keep current content in the exhibit with very little effort. Um, and so as the blog is updated, so is the display. Okay, um, this is just a mini display. It has a note card um, on how to get into Second Life as well as Vicara, so people who peruse through here, maybe there's people that have never been into Second Life um, and they're interested in what it has to offer. Um, we use this building as a way to expose them to that as well. And then here we have uh, the entire wall on this section I have lined with images from Vicara and Second Life so that even if nobody sets foot, they've never set foot in Second Life before, or they simply aren't able to for some reason or have no desire to, um, they're able to see what we're doing in Second Life. Perhaps it will inspire them, and perhaps it will inspire them to come back to Second Life if they've left it for some reason. And then I have a, an explanation of what these images are. Some of you may recognize them. Okay, and then this last picture of the Vicara University space, uh, you might notice looks a little empty. Um, that's because it is, um, and um, it's ready to be branched out into um, if there's another uh, university that's interested in uh, partnering here and either having a branch or an exhibit, um, just the same as the rooftop is empty. And um, it would also work well as a presentation or conference room. Okay, um, so this next portion um, is about the Virtual World Communities Database. Uh, Val had mentioned it a little bit before. I'm going to kind of blast through it a little bit because I see that we are running low on time. Uh, 
Uh, basically, it came about as uh, Metaverse Libraries. It's kind of an online version, almost, of uh, what we're doing in Kitely. Um, and so I started on a project uh, for it. And I do also have a version of this over at the exhibit that's currently on display at um, CVL, which I'll discuss in a moment. Okay, and so then uh, why are we trying to catalog virtual communities? Because that's what the database is all about. Um, whoops, my slide got changed. Um, well, uh, documenting virtual worlds is important so that future generations know what information professionals and educators accomplish with virtual worlds. Um, and this is especially important because virtual worlds are ever changing. And once a simulation disappears, it's difficult, if not impossible, to find traces of it. Um, and additionally, uh, there's a lack of in-world tools for searching simulations and communities that currently exist. And so not only are we having trouble documenting virtual worlds, but also finding the ones that do exist. Um, something else to note is that this, there have been previous attempts to do something similar to this. Um, and so that's something that we have to keep in mind and um, explain to ourselves and to others how this time is different. Um, and basically, there hasn't been, to our knowledge, a, a successful attempt to put a database like this online before, um, and especially with the intent of connecting and documenting educational communities as resources. Okay, and so I have some images here, um, and they're basically just images of attempts at documenting them in world before. Some are from Vicara, and some are from CVL, and we have the Hypergrid Resource Center pictured here, and that works as a very good complement to what we're doing on, uh, just in Second Life. So it's also an excellent, the same way that we have Kitely, we also have the Hypergrid Resource Center in Second Life, and then we have the Virtual Community Database. Okay, um, and so if this sounds like a lot of work, you are right. Um, if you know of any education-oriented virtual communities you'd like to add, please fill out our Google form so that we can add them to the database. And that is also on the note card, as is the link to the database. So please feel free to search it. It's still in its infancy, but it's definitely um, able to be searched. Um, and then um, if you have any advice, you can also contact us. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, you can check out, like I mentioned before, I have a presentation on it at the CVL's Digital Citizenship Exhibit. And actually, I'm in a little bit of a hurry because Val has to be somewhere at 7. She is doing a tour tonight of the Digital Citizenship Exhibit. Um, and I see Val is giving us a note card for uh, round two. Um, there's been a lot of interest. It's very popular. And so we filled out the first floor, and they're looking to add a second floor. So. Um, take a look at that and see if you would be interested in adding your own presentation to it. Um, and if you are interested in, um, if you're interested in going and seeing it tonight, please feel free to join Val. We have the link, um, and it's also, uh, it's in the note card, and it's also right next door, so you can fly over there um, if you'd like. I'll be flying over after this, so you can always just follow me. Okay, and I also have a link to my student blog, I should say, that has um, also some more information about the database. Um, and finally, if you're interested in curating it, please feel free to join us. Um, you can always contact me or Val, and um, if you're interested in contributing to it or curating it in any way, um, we'd love to hear from you and uh, partner with you. And um, so finally, uh, thank you so much for attending the presentation. Connecting and documenting virtual worlds is an important cause that librarians and educators must think about in the present. Um, and we hope that our work and research has exposed you to the metaverse and inspired you to embrace metaliteracy. And um, th thank you, Val, and um, I'll see you shortly. <laughs>
Um, and this slide has our contact information in both Second Life and Kitely. And feel free to friend us. And we have we can do a Q&A portion if anyone has questions, but Val does have to have to scoot. So we won't be able to ask Val any questions. Um, but if you have any questions for Marie and me, uh, please uh, feel free to type them in the chat or um, ask. In <laughs>